the real joy is we have to uh, check the CO2, and the only way to check the CO2, you gotta drink it. So, no other way. Vince? Ah, oh, we're done. There you go. Yep. Cheers, bud. That's a wrap. Yep. The 49th State Brewing Company is a small production craft brewery located in Healy, Alaska, which is about 10 miles north of Denali National Park, Alaska. What is very unique about our brewery is that we are located in a very remote part of interior Alaska. We're around 2,300 feet above sea level. It could rain, it could snow, it could be hailing at any time, and then three hours later you have beautiful sunny weather and you're sitting on the deck. These temperature changes are something that we have to deal with all the time up here. And so the facilities open seasonally from the third week of April through the first week of October. Yeah, I'm David, by the way. I'm one of the owners of the brewery. Nice to meet you. Welcome to our brewery. I hope you like the beer. What makes our beer different? To me, it's passion. Because when we go to choose the malt, right? When we go to choose the yeast, when we go to choose the hops in our beer, we take a lot of time to choose these things, making little teas out of every single hop that we've never had to see what that aroma would be. We eat the malt to see what the taste of the malt would be like. We use multiple yeast strains, which allow the flavors to come out in our beer, and we don't use the yeast over and over and over again. And we don't pasteurize our beer, so there is still living yeast in our beer. We have glacier aquifers underneath our feet right now, and that water is so pure, it's not filled with fluoride, it's not filled with chlorine, it's not pumped through miles and miles of city sewer line. Literally, it's 100 feet away from where we brew it. One of the beauties of being up in Alaska is the water comes out of the ground just above freezing. It's such an advantage to cooling our beer down rapidly that it actually helps speed up the production of our beer in our brew day. We have 25 different beers that we make throughout the year. But after we close down, we continue to brew beer that we call our hibernation series that we hold over through the winter to launch during the summer months while we're open. Our hibernation series is a little play on when the beers go to sleep up here. We actually brew beers that typically would take longer time to mature, and it takes a little bit more time for these flavors to mellow out, especially higher alcohol beers. And these beers are then brought out throughout the summer. This is inspired by a German Bach beer. So the Germans have a, a famous using using the word Ader at the end of it. And so we took a play on that and we call this our hibernator. So this is one of the first beers that we brew in our hibernation series and we've been brewing it ever since we've been open. So. We got lucky, this one's delicious too. This right here is a Prospector's Gold. This is a, one of the lightest beers that we make. It's in the 5% alcohol. It's the number one selling beer that we make because we know it will be because it's a, it's a very sessionable beer. Here we've got our Baked Blonde Ale. Uh, it's 5.6% alcohol, 18 IBUs, so it's low perceived bitterness. One of the symbols that we had of this beer was a girl riding a bear. And if you look in the corner of the brewery, you'll see a grizzly bear with a girl, blonde hair, ponytail girl, riding the grizzly bear. And that is the symbol for the baked blonde ale. So, let's see if this was good. Mm. Delicious. I grew up in Anchorage, Alaska. I was running this whitewater rafting company up here. And in 2006, I had met David. He actually ended up riding his motorcycle up from Chicago, never intending to stay. He took a position at the Denali Park Sandbank as a breakfast cook. David and I started to click and talk about all these different things. And so in August 2010, with the grill on the back deck, making hamburgers and the small Sabco brewing system, we ended up forming today what is 49th State Brewing Company. One of the things I was so attracted to about actually changing my way of life and actually moving to Alaska was this freedom that we can operate a business opening up in May and run it through the end of September and we'd shut it down for over six months a year. It was always my dream to eventually go to brewing school. 
and the timing worked perfectly in 2009 for myself to go back to school and I decided to go to Siebel Institute and I did the first part of my brewing education. I came back, we opened the brewery up. After the brewery was running, I went back and finished the remainder of my education at Doman's Academy in Germany. The whole brewery actually started here um, on a half a barrel at a time and we would basically brew from basically sun up to sundown. And uh, unfortunately, the challenges we had were um, once we told people on social media that we had our beer on draft, they would drive as far away as like 120, 130 miles. But uh, by the time they would get down here, um, usually the local community would come in and they would wipe us out of our beer. So we had a few angry people, but that's where the growth of the, of the brew pub concept really came from. So this is the backbone of our brewery. Actually, the true backbone of our brewery is our head brewer right here, Vince. And this is the machines that make it work. Right here, we have a three vessel, 15 barrel brew house from Premier Stainless out of San Diego, California. In our fermenting tanks, we have 45 barrel fermenting tanks and 15 barrel fermenting tanks. One of the decisions is as we grew, we decided to keep some of these smaller 15 barrel fermenters in order to make some of these one-off beers that we became known to. We've increased the volume of our, some of our flagship beers in order to have them on tap as we grow and expand the brewery for bottling. What we're gonna pull off here is a smoked Martin. So it's a lagered beer, but with 60% smoke malt. We have a specific blend of smoke malts that we use. Brees is one of them in Wisconsin. Another one, which obviously we're huge fans of because we use all their base malt, yeah. is in Bamberg, Germany. And it just so happens to be the epicenter of smoked beer in the world. We are very lucky to receive a gold medal at the GABF for this specific beer. It's not ready, it's still in maturation. Um, we still have to move this over to the bright tanks and carbonate this, which is gonna change, obviously change the mouthfeel and the flavor of that beer. And the one thing we always try to tell people is, <laughs> the Germans have a saying that says, never judge a smoke beer until you had three liters, right? So, you know, you might be a little drunk then, we'll have to see, but we try to pass that on to our guests. Cheers. Cheers, Vince. So every year, hundreds of thousands of people come to Denali National Park. There's no other places in North America we can go and see moose and bears and doll sheep and wolves and caribou in such a unique setting. So when we first opened Fort Nesta Brewing Company, the idea was, okay, we're gonna get these tourists to go ahead and come down from the canyon. The canyon, which is basically the park entrance area, and Healy are roughly 12 miles away. So when we first developed the Fort Nesta Brewing Company, we had to carry Budweiser, because that was the only thing that the locals would drink. Budweiser, Budweiser, like, hey, you guys wanna try this, you know, baked blonde ale? And they're like, you're drinking it? They're like, oh, that's pretty good. Slowly but surely now, the town of Healy loves what we do. They love that we bring these different people into the area. And I think they're proud that this Fort Nesta Brewing Company is in their small community. We started bottling our beer last year. And our beer is available in Alaska only at this time. If our beer is found anywhere else around the United States, that means somebody actually had to come here to pick it up. Our beer can always be taken to go in growlers and crawlers, which is a 32 ounce can. It's very unique because we can actually take right off our draft system and fill up a 32 ounce can and seal the can right there. Right. Soul Society BA, The hardest thing about running a business here in Interior Alaska is the logistics and the infrastructure. There just really is none here. I mean, outside of power, which goes out on a you know weekly basis, the transportation of food, product, all has to come from the lower 48, all has to get shipped up from Anchorage. You gotta have the cooling systems, the refrigeration, all this stuff in place, right? Whereas in the city, if you need to get a plumbing part or you need to get a breaker box for a panel, you can just run to the Home Depot or the hardware store. Here, we have to drive two hours to Fairbench. As we grew, our building wasn't big enough, so we had to find ways to deal with all these challenges. In construction in the middle of interior Alaska is extremely, almost cost prohibitive for a small brewery that runs seasonally. So one of the unique methods that we did is we've actually converted these shipping containers into um, exterior coolers. Basically, this is our setup that we started as we continue to grow because the cooler space inside was too small. And as our production grew, we would buy these insulated shipping containers and we would set up all our draft systems 
outside, and then we have the challenge of running them inside the building. One of the other unique things is as we increase the production of their beer, <laughs> dealing with the remote location, we had to find out ways to mill in. And one of the issues of milling grain is you want to use a lot of gravity to do it. So you're going to mill it in and let the natural gravity pull it down. <laughs> so our unique uh, shipping container stack that you see behind us, and our mill is in the shipping container. These are all our specialty malts here, but the base malt, which is the majority of the malt, right now he's putting it in here into our mill, which is gravity fed. We mill it to a large container, and then when they're ready, they can actually just auger that, that grain out when the, when the brewer is ready to start the beer. Here we are in our bus barn that we convert into our dining room and brewing facility. This uh, building here was, you can see, a three bay bus barn that was originally built for Airmark Corporation. So we converted the space into our dining room area. One of the unique things about us, we always wanted to take what was outside and help bring it in because we fell in love with the surroundings and the environment up here. So we have live fire outside. We wanted to bring a fire pit inside. The base of our fireplace is actually a part of the oil pipeline that goes through Alaska. And a lot of these elements that we have here were built by local artisans in the community out of things that we had here. Tables handmade by friends of ours that actually took the trees from the outside and the rocks from the outside. The antler chandeliers that we have, these are all real antler chandeliers. And this gentleman gathers these from local communities and makes these beautiful chandeliers for us. We try to use the elements around our area to lower our costs, but what ends up happening is these unique artisans help make the identity, which is 49th State Brewing Company. I'm a chef by trade. My passion was in food, in the restaurant industry. Our menu is very approachable, but we take a lot of ingredients from places around the area and around Alaska. We specialize on a lot of game. We use halibut from Homer. We use produce from a local farm down the street. We use Delta Meats, which is you know, raising pigs and yaks for us. We have a unique relationship in our local community up here in Healy, Alaska. And we were lucky to find a, a local farmer that was raising pigs, chickens, ducks on his farm that comes here with his pickup truck after we're done brewing and he picks up this spent grain malt. He is raising these animals on the grain that we produce and we were gonna be buying them back to actually serve them in our restaurant. One of our goals from the beginning of the 49th State Brewing Company here in our original location in Healy was give this local community something that they can be proud of to say is their own. And the people here have embraced it as another member of their community. And that is really why the brand is called 49th State Brewing Company. Because we want the people from this state to be proud of what it is and we want to showcase that as people that come up here to see who we are, how we live, and would experience something that is what we call Alaskan culture.